Hi everyone, welcome to Difference Frames the World, a channel to see the world differently. Before starting today's video, we want to share some great news about the channel. The channel is now monetized again. We hope to get back on the right track shortly. Please subscribe to our channel and share our videos with your friends so we can grow into a big community with 1 million subscribers soon. Today we discuss whether NATO will start a war with Russia and trigger World War III, as stated in the previous video uploaded last week. One viewer asks what NATO is, so it might be better to introduce it at the beginning of today's video. NATO, also known as the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or the North Atlantic Alliance, is a regional collective defense military alliance. It comprises over 30 member states, including 30 nations from Europe and two from North America. Each member is an independent state, united by a common goal to defend each other when a third party threatens any of them. The United States and Canada are two NATO member states outside Europe. It is worth mentioning that NATO does not protect Hawaii. If one country attacked Hawaii, as Japan assaulted Pearl Harbor in the early 1940s, NATO would not protect the 50th U.S. state because Hawaii is not in the North Atlantic. If America's overseas military bases are not located in the North Atlantic area, like those in Japan and South Korea, NATO is not responsible for protecting them. NATO was born in April 1949, when the West faced threats from the former Soviet Union. Despite the dissolution of the USSR in the early 1990s, NATO did not disband. Instead, it chose to evolve, advancing eastward to include most former Soviet Union member states, including the three Baltic nations. NATO wants to go global and never stops expanding. In Europe, it advances eastward toward Russia and moves northward, accepting Finland and Sweden in 2023 and 2024, respectively. It also tries to influence Asia, cooperating with Japan and South Korea, seemingly to start another mission to challenge China. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken announced days ago that Ukraine would become a NATO member, but this seems to be lip service again. Ukraine lost hundreds of thousands of soldiers and extensive land, while the U.S. and other NATO countries have not shed a single drop of blood. NATO has indeed provided billions of dollars worth of weapons to Ukraine to strengthen its self-defense, but no one has promised Ukraine that those weapons are free. As the number one supporter, the U.S. has approved over $44 billion of military aid to Ukraine, even though its government has been struggling not to close the door for lack of money. Although the U.S. has not officially asked Ukraine to pay back the military aid, the military industry complex is not a charity organization. America's taxpayers are responsible for paying for the weapons and ammunition sent to Ukraine, and they can hardly get a refund even if the U.S. government gets a fat check from Ukrainians after the war ends. Other NATO members started providing military support, including lethal weapons, to Ukraine after the war began, although their economies were deeply affected by the war. NATO member states are not equally supportive of Ukraine. Among them, Poland is the most aggressive against Russia for historical reasons. Three Baltic nations, especially Lithuania, are also keen on helping Ukraine against Russia. Many NATO nations, particularly those small ones, are afraid of Russia. Western media keeps warning them that Russia will attack them after taking over Ukraine. Russian President Putin dismissed the accusation as nonsense on March 27, 2024, when meeting with Russian military pilots in Russia's Tver region. He pointed out that the U.S. military spending in 2022 exceeded $810 billion, 11 times Russia's $72 billion. Putin said NATO first came to Russia's borders. Did we drive to the borders of those NATO countries? He questioned, did we cross the ocean to the US border? Putin denied that Russia was planning to attack other European countries after the Russia-Ukraine conflict, saying it is complete nonsense to scare their people to extract more money from their pockets. In the previous video, we mentioned that Russia's greed for land scares European countries, and some viewers disagreed with us. We do not want to take that statement back, though. In history, Russia grabbed vast land from its neighbors, and it went to war with many countries, including Poland, Lithuania, Sweden, and Finland, to name a few. Russian Empire seized 1.5 million square kilometers of land from China's Qing dynasty. 
The former Soviet Union coerced Outer Mongolia to seek independence. China lost 3 million square kilometers of land because of Russia, equivalent to India's total area. China and Russia have a sound relationship nowadays, as they need each other to deal with the United States. They unite for survival but are only friends under certain circumstances as countries develop interest-based relations. Suppose today's China were still as weak as the Qing dynasty. Russia would never want to develop good relations with Beijing in that case. Similarly, suppose today's Russia was still as potent and aggressive as the former Soviet Union or Russian Empire. In that case, China might have to side with the United States, as it did in the early 1980s when former US President Reagan visited Beijing to seek China's support in dealing with the Soviets. It is worth mentioning that most European countries are tiny, much weaker than China's Qing dynasty. However, today's Russia is more potent than the Russian Empire in the 19th century. Even if Russia has no interest in taking over other countries' land anymore, most European nations are scared. When people see a tiger on the street, even if it is not interested in eating any two-legged creatures, no one will believe it is a vegetarian pet. In the eyes of most people in the world, Russia is famous for its polar bears, and the country is regarded as a polar bear. Russia's land area is over 17 million square kilometers, and Europe's total area, excluding Russia, is slightly over 6 million. However, if we do not include Russia in the list, there are 43 European countries. Russia is too big, and most European countries are too small. That is why NATO still grew eastward and northward after the collapse of the formal Soviet Union, as most small nations felt the threat from Russia, although psychologically. NATO becomes the shelter for most European countries, and as a result, Russia is NATO's new target after the former Soviet Union. After the dissolution of the Warsaw Pact, NATO continued to grow, and it gradually accepted the former Warsaw Pact member states as NATO's new members. NATO took further steps to include some of the former Soviet Union's member states, like the three Baltic nations, as its members. The Ukraine war is a result of NATO's further advancement toward Russia, as it wants to admit Ukraine to the military alliance. In 2019, Ukraine revised its constitution and made joining NATO its goal. The Ukraine conflict began much earlier than the Ukraine war. When Ukraine gained independence in 1991 following the collapse of the former communist superpower, it already had a bad relationship with Russia. In 2014, Russia annexed Crimea, an originally Russian land that had been given to Ukraine in 1955. Later Ukraine's several eastern states, like Donbass, started to seek independence from Kiev. It is noteworthy that Donbass was given to Ukraine by Lenin, in 1918, after the Russian Empire was overthrown. When Russia took over Donbass and other breakaway states from Ukraine in a seemingly democratic way as it took back Crimea, it believed it was recovering its land instead of robbing Ukraine of its sovereignty. Some, if not all, other European countries, however, disagree. Two Scandinavian nations, Sweden and Finland, submitted their applications to join NATO three months after Russia took special military action against Ukraine. Finland was the bridge connecting Russia with the West, a country that had maintained neutrality for over half a century. Before the Ukraine war broke out, it had been avoiding the topic of joining NATO as a formal member. Sweden had been neutral for two centuries till it became a NATO member state in March 2024. Both countries broke their neutrality three months after Putin launched the Ukraine war. We mentioned in previous videos that the admission of Sweden and Finland to NATO as members posed a more significant threat to Russia than Ukraine joining NATO. What forced Sweden and Finland to break their neutrality? The answer is straightforward. It is fear. They are afraid of Russia taking over their land and enslaving their people. Many viewers may say it is purely Western rhetoric and Russia has no intent of invading other countries after defeating Ukraine. The problem is that no one cares whether Russia will invade other nations after Ukraine. It only takes the West one minute to accuse Russia of taking over the whole of Europe if Ukraine fails, but Russia will need years to prove its innocence. Although many people in Europe do not like NATO and plead with their governments to exit, more nations seek NATO's protection. Sweden and Finland will not be the last batch to join NATO, 
and the military alliance will continue to grow. For the United States, NATO is like a double-sided sword. It helps the US control Europe and deter Russia, but is also a burden and liability for America. NATO's most member states are small, offering little help to other nations during war. Take Lithuania as an example. Its land and population are ignorable, but its politicians are very daring, willing to fight Russia till the last drop of other people's blood. Lithuania, like Poland, was Russia's centuries-long enemy. If it someday went to war with Russia, all member states of NATO should have a head-to-head -head with Moscow, starting a nuclear war to end the world. Still, we believe NATO will not initiate World War III and fight Russia directly. With Donald Trump's probable second term, he may reshape the relationship between America and the military alliance. Donald Trump may not remove the US from NATO, but he will force his allies to shoulder more responsibility. He is a businessman and his focus is always on profit. Let us see if he can be re-elected and whether he can end the Ukraine conflict within 24 hours as he bragged.